Hello, we continue with our series. My name is Dr. Ominde, so I'm going to discuss about the brainstem. So the brainstem is composed of three parts. We have the midbrain, pons, and the medulla, and that picture depicts the parts. So that's um, the midbrain, that's the pons, and that's the medulla oblongata. Again, that's a mid-sagittal um, section of the brain. So you get to appreciate the midbrain there. That's the pons, and that's the medulla oblongata. So you need to appreciate um, um, parts of the midbrain. So that's we have the cerebral aqueduct passing through the midbrain. Remember, you were taught uh, the floor of CSF by Professor Bigby from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct. So it passes through the, the midbrain and then to the fourth ventricle, which is located posterior to the pons and to the medulla. So that's the fourth ventricle. So this cerebral aqueduct divides the midbrain into an anterior part and a posterior part that has the tectum. These are the tectum, we call them the corpora quadrigemina that has the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. So again, that picture shows you the parts of the brainstem. So that's the midbrain, that's the pons, and that's the medulla and the different parts. So we are going to discuss the cerebral peduncle of the midbrain. We'll appreciate the structures in the pons and the um, cranial nerves that are located on the different parts of the, of the uh, brain. So that's the pons. And that's a medulla with the different uh, parts, the pyramids, the olives. So we are going to discuss all this. So the, we'll start with the medulla oblongata. So ventrally, we have a ventral, median ventral sulcus. Okay. So follow my arrow at the diagram. That's a, a median ventral sulcus. And um, it's usually interrupted by the pyramidal decussation. So pyramidal decussation are nerve fibers of the pyramids when they're crossing at the midline. The ones at the right, some cross to the left and on the left cross to the right. So this crossing will interrupt um, the median ventral sulcus. So what are the structures at, uh, at the ventral medulla, the anterior aspect of the med medulla? What's the arrangement of the structures? From medial to lateral. So we start from the median sulcus. From the median sulcus, we have the pyramids, okay, on both sides. After the pyramids, we have a ventral lateral sulcus, and this ventral lateral sulcus usually contains rootless of the 12th cranial nerve, which is hypoglossal nerve, and ventral roots of the first cervical nerve. Then, lateral to this ventral lateral sulcus, we have the olives, which um, has the olivary eminence, okay. And then in the sulcus dorsal to olive, we have the rootless of three cranial nerves, that cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, which are hypoglossal, vagus, and accessory nerves, respectively. Dorsal to the olives, we have the tuberculum cinerium, and tuberculum cinerium contains the spinal tract and nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So those are the structures on the anterior surface of the medalloblongata. So you start with the pyramids that contain cortical spinal fibers. Lateral to the pyramid is the ventral lateral sulcus containing rootlets of hypoglossal nerve and C1 uh, nerve. Then you have the olives. After the olives is a sulcus containing cranial nerves of glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerve. And following that sulcus is a tuberculum scenario containing the spinal tract and nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Again, that just shows you the pyramids that's a median ventral sulcus interrupted by pyramidal decussation. Then these are the pyramids, ventral lateral sulcus with 12th cranial nerve and ventral roots of C1 and C2. Then we have olives with the olivary eminence, followed by a sulcus that has rootlets of glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerve. And lateral to that, we have the tuberculum scenario containing the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. On the dorsal surface of the medulla, again, we follow the same, we have a, vent, uh, a dorsal uh, median sulcus. So that's the dorsal median sulcus. 
at the midline. So lateral to it, we have the um, gracile tubercle containing nucleus gracilis. After that, we have the gracile, uh, sorry, the cuneate tubercle containing the um, nucleus cuneatus. So again, on the dorsal surface of the medulla, you have the dorsal median sulcus, followed by the gracile tubercles containing nucleus gracilis. Then lateral to that, we have the cuneate tubercles containing nucleus cuneatus. Then we have three cranial nerves that exit and enter the brainstem at the medallopontine junction ventrally. Medallopontine junction between the medulla and the pons. And these cranial nerves are cranial nerve six that's located between pons and pyramid. So that's abducens nerve. Then between pons and olives, we have cranial nerve seven, which is facial nerve. And at the medallopontine angle, we have cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibular cochlea. By now, you know that's the ventral median sulcus. These are the pyramids. That's the olive. So between pyramids and pons, abducens nerve, pons and olives, you have uh, facial nerve. And then at the medallopontine angle, laterally, you have the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number eight. Again, this is the ventral median uh, sulcus, these are the pyramids, followed by the olives, then the tuberculum, cinerium with the spinal tract and nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So what, which tracts are located in the medulla? We have ascending tracts and descending tracts. Ascending tracts means they're coming from other parts going to the brain, okay, to the cortex, while descending are coming from um, parts of the brain going downwards to the spinal cord. So at the medulla, we have the spinal thalamic uh, tract, lateral and ventral spinal thalamic. We have spinal tectal tract, spinal cerebellar tract, fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus, and the medial lemniscus. So all these tracts are ascending to the brain. While descending corticospinal from cortex to the spinal cord, rubrospinal from red nucleus to the spinal cord, vestibulospinal from vestibular nucleus to the spinal cord, Reticular spinal from um, um, reticular formation to the spinal cord and the spinal tracts so of trigeminal nerve. So, which nuclei are located at the medulla? We have nuclei, vestibular nuclei and cochlear nuclei for vestibular cochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 8. Nucleus ambiguous, which is used by glossopharyngeal and vagus. Dorsal vagal nuclei, which carries the parasympathetic components of cranial nerve 10. And hypoglossal nucleus of hypoglossal nerve and spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So all these nuclei are located in the medulla. You can be asked to list the nuclei at the medulla of Langata. And this is a picture showing you the medulla at the level of the fourth ventricle. Okay, this is the fourth ventricle. So this is the olivary nucleus. All right. And you have a medial accessory olivary nucleus and a dorsal accessory olivary nucleus. Then we have the dorsal vagal nuclear here and the hypoglossal nuclear located here. So bilaterally, these are hypoglossal, these are dorsal nuclei. You have medial, posterior, cochlear nuclear. You have nuclear ambiguous here and the dorsal accessory olivary nucleus. Then we also have different tracts, okay? So you need to pause on this slide and be able to appreciate the different tracts and nuclei located at the medulla. Again, this just shows you the different tracts. So the ascending tracts, we have fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus here, dorsal spinal cerebellar and ventral spinal cerebellar, lateral spinal thalamic tract here, and the descending tracts, we have lateral corticospinal, and we have the corticospinal tracts within the, the pyramid. And then you can appreciate the sensory nuclei, nuclear gracilis, nuclear cuneatus, and the spinal tract, the nucleus of trigeminal nerve, and you also have other uh, motor nuclei. So you need to pause and be able to appreciate all these structures of the medulla oblongata. So what are the functions of this nuclei? The solitarius nuclei is for test and it's connected to the thalamus, the facial nerve, glossopharyngeal, and the vagus. Gracile and cuneate nuclei are for proprioception and fine touch, and they're connected to fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, as well as the thalamus and the cerebellum. Inferior olivary nucleus controls muscle activity and it's connected to the spinal cord and cerebellum, while inferior salivary nuclear controls the parotid gland secretion and it's connected to gastrointestinal nucleus and the glossopharyngeal nerve. 
Reticular formation, which controls the vasomotor and respiratory centers, uh, have a role in regulation of vital functions and they're connected to vagal nuclei, nucleophrenic and intercostal nerves, the spinal cord, and the brainstem. So, what is the blood supply to the medulla? So, we have anterior spinal arteries, and this supply the anterior medial surface. So, the pyramid, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the medial lemniscus, hypoglossal nuclei, all these are supplied by anterior spinal arteries. So, supply anterior two thirds of the medulla. Posterior spinal artery supplies fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Then we have pica, P I C A, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, supplies the retroliberary region with the spinothalamic tracts and other nuclei, while we have bulbar branches of vertebral artery that supply the pyramids, the hypoglossal nuclei, the preolivary nuclear complex. So these are the blood vessels to the medulla. Okay, so this is your vertebral artery, usually gives anterior spinal arteries that fuse. And also, these are the posterior spinal arteries. It will give posterior spinal artery. These are the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. So all these arteries supply the medulla. So you, and the venous supply is by basilar venous plexus, inferior petrol soul sinus, and the occipital sinus. Again, that's just to show you the anterior part is supplied by anterior spinal and posterior part by posterior spinal as well as pica, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So we have what you call the medial medullary syndrome, where you have occlusion of the medullary branch of anterior spinal or bulbar branches of vertebral artery, and it will affect the medial lemniscus, so you lose sensation of position and discriminatory touch and vibration sense on the opposite side of the body. The pyramids will be affected, leading to contralateral hemiparesis and hypoglossal nerve affected leads to ipsilateral paralysis of the tongue. So you need to be able to uh, know what is medial medullary syndrome, which artery is affected, which anatomical structures are affected, and what are the clinical uh, symptoms when each structure is affected. So this you'll get to understand when we are going to discuss the pathways. So medial lemniscus will affect position and discriminatory and vibratory uh, sensation on the opposite side of the body. Pyramids with corticospinal tracts will get contralateral hemiparesis, which is paralysis on the opposite side of the body. And hypoglossal will give you paralysis of the tongue on the same side of the lesion. Lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome, where you have occlusion of posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So anatomical structures that are affected in the clinical features, you have spinal tract and nucleus of trigeminal, will lead to ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature from the face. The spinal lemniscus will lead, you, lead to loss of pain and temperature on the opposite side of the body. Nucleus ambiguous will, uh, lesion will cause ipsilateral paralysis of the palate muscles, so swallowing and formation will be affected. Hypothalamus spinal tract lesions will lead to honor syndrome that is usually characterized by meiosis, which is a constricted pupil, ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelids, and anhydrosis, where there's less sweating. Inferior cerebellar peduncle and vestibular nuclei will be affected, and that leads to dizziness and cerebellar ataxia as well as nystagmus. Nystagmus is oscillatory uh, eyeball movement. So you need to know uh, which vessel is affected in lateral medullary syndrome, which anatomical structures, and what are the clinical features for each. So again, that just shows you the area of lesion where posterior inferior cerebellar artery uh, occlusion uh, will affect. So next we will discuss the points. Thank you very much.